Welcome back there, buds. Next up on the bench is a very exciting project that I've been waiting to show you. This is a mid-century modern coffee table. This owner built this himself in high school woodshop class in 1960 or 1961. He wasn't sure. His name is even written on the bottom in pencil. So I believe him that it's his. He joined up all the mahogany. This is completely solid mahogany. He made this all from scratch himself, which is amazing to me that I get to bring this back to life 60 years later. So let's get in, let's take a closer look at it, and let's get started. Since these screws were stripped out here a little bit, I don't want to use uh, any longer screws, just keep the original screws there. And I will just fill that up. You could use a toothpick or anything, but put a little bit of glue on just a little piece of wood, kind of fill back in that hole since it was stripped out, a little bit of little bit of wood in there I just cut these on the bandsaw out of a scrap piece of wood and then you just go like so but you want to put a little bit of glue down in there too and that will screw right back in just a little dab I put a couple in these since that was a Screw right in the middle of those three. Give it a test. Strip See if pull on pretty much anything. It's good as new. Nice and tight. Gonna fix these legs. There was the one over there, screws on nice and tight. That doesn't need fixed, but this one and that middle one definitely does. As you can see, that is maybe uh, just a, you know a screw coming from the other side, some type of a bolt that just the leg screws down onto. I think what I'm going to do just take a three-quarter inch, drill that out, and glue new dowel down in there. Then I can re-drill that size hole, and it won't be stripped out be a nice solid repair
Now that I got those clamped up, I'll let them clamp for a couple hours, let that glue set up. As you can see, that there is the leg that had no troubles. They will look like that. They're kind of like a splayed leg. They go out a little bit of an angle. That very mid-century modern look. Should be pretty good. I'm going to let these dry. I'm going to take that leg off, flip this table over, and start sanding on that top. That is not looking bad at all. After that first pass, starting to level that all out. Pretty much all the watermarks all came out. It's a little bit dark right there, but I believe one more pass. I'm gonna do one more pass with the 120, and then one pass with the 150, and then block it all by hand with the 220. And there are some little, little cracks in there from when it was glued up. It looks like there was like a reddish filler in there at one point that kind of came out. So I might just dig that out. I'm going to wet that wood a little bit to see what that natural wood color looks like. See if I have a filler that might match that. We'll go from there. Now what I'm doing is just wetting the wood here with a little bit of naphtha. And that will show me the natural color of the wood as well as clean off any remnants of wax or oil or grease or anything that might have been down in that wood. You can see that nice mahogany, beautiful grain color. So that is more to the brown side, but brown mahogany I guess. This will also show me if I have any swirl marks or any bad scratches that I need to address. But it's looking pretty good. Other than a little bit of paint down in there. So I think I can just use a brown filler. Looked like they used that red filler before that was Probably a little bit too red for this piece. So I will dig that out and put in the brown. And I just have a light brown filler. It'll look nice. It ought to match. This is the wood filler that I will be using. It's nice and easy to use, water cleanup. It won't crack and shrink and all that. And yeah, I like it. I go a little bit lighter, so if it's too light, I can always touch it up and color correct as needed. If you go too dark, that's pretty much what you're stuck with.
half hour maybe, hour, and is ready to sand. And just add a little bit more if needed. I let that filler all totally cure overnight just to be sure that down those cracks it was nice and dry. And before I sand that top, that top one last time, I just want to scuff up the bottom here. I have the, the maker's name it was in pencil. He signed it. So I have that taped over so that doesn't be isn't affected. But I will just seal the bottom of this table. So I just want to scuff it just a little bit with a little bit of 150 just to kind of clean it up and open up those pores a little bit to accept that finish. So that's what I'm going to do before I do the top. I got that all cleaned up. Going to just give a little squirt here. over the name to protect that for years to come. I'm going to clean up these legs, get those sanded up and get them back on the bottom. That way I can just flip that table over, give it a quick finish sand, and then start with the finish. On this piece, I will use water locks as the seal coat, followed up with armor seal as the top coat. I will apply both of these with a natural bristle brush and then wipe a little bit of the excess clean. The water locks provides a lot of nice color to the grain, but doesn't provide a lot of build where the armor seal is going to give me that build and give me a nicer top coat.
after I apply all the finish, I take a rag and I wipe around the edges and underneath and ensure that there are no drips or anything underneath there and I just try to smooth it all out as much as possible. I do not wipe the excess off of the top. I allow that all to fully penetrate the wood and cure in the wood. Now before I do the finished coats, I will do a little bit of touch up where the filler is lighter. I wanted that lighter, like I said, so that I can build that color up. It can always get darker, but once you go too dark, that's all you got. You're stuck. So what I'm going to do is just take a little cup. And I'm going to use the base for that. That's the finish that I will be applying to this. I'm going to put a little bit in my cup there. Then, take my dye, trans tint dye, and just mix, just try three drops in there. Just gonna mix that up. So it dries, it'll blend in even more. It might look a little funny right now because of that sheen. The wood surface is very dull. The plan here is to apply this, give it a little bit of time to really soak in and uh, dry before we do that top coat with the uh, armor seal
After that finish set up overnight, I block it out with 400 grit sandpaper, followed up with a gray scuff pad that prepares it for the second coat of finish. The second coat is applied just like the first. I also wipe any remaining dust off with a dampened rag. After repeating all of the same steps in step two, for step three, I will prepare a pad. I will use this to apply a hand rubbed finish as the third and final coat. This bucko break is brought to you by my buds at cwpress.com. Contact them today for all of your t-shirt, sticker, and custom screen printing needs. And say hello to their shop dog named Logo. Hey Buck, what are you doing with that ear? Is that your new look? You gonna get some air in that ear? Come on buddy. Come on. That ear flip makes them faster. Such a maniac. Buddy. You're out of breath. There's a telltale sign of spring right there, buds. Look at all those frog eggs. You'll put your little tadpoles and come out here in a couple weeks and you're just gonna hear beep, 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 or whatever they sound like. You know what I mean. You ready to go? Huh? Can I get one last high five? You one last high five? Give me a sit. Give me a sit. Give me a high five. That's my buddy. <laughs> After letting that finish cure for days and days and days and days and days, I give it a good buffing with some rubbing compound with this buffer. And then we'll give it a one quick wipe down and we're good to go. Now that I got that all wiped down, one less step I'm going to do here. Just take that feed and wax. 
little bit of beeswax and orange oil just to protect that finish a little just give it a little bit of shine <laughs> not that it needs anymore it'll just make it feel nice and smooth because after you buff that it is very uh, tacky or something along those lines I'm not really sure how, how to explain it this just really evens that all out and I will just go around and wipe the legs down with this as well and this will set in and evaporate let it dry and we'll do the follow-up, get in here, and take one last close look at the finished product. Well, buds, there we are with another one done. As always, if you like what you see, just give me a like down underneath there. Give me a comment down there. Share it. Tell your, tell your best buds. If you would like a shirt like this, got them in black too. Some stickers. Link down there in the description. If you would like to find me on Facebook and Instagram, link down there in the description. So, without further ado, let's just get into it and take a look at that final result. Thanks for watching, stay safe, see you next time, buds.